Ceylon Pass, total football. Hey guys, welcome back to Ceylon Pass. And today we are going to touch on Ozil, his exclusion from the Arsenal squad, and just all things Arsenal probably. So joining us today is Gaje. He's back again after his one appearance. Uh, say hi. <laughs> and for the first time today is Darren. So right, we'll start with uh, Ozil. Okay. Obviously, under un, unless you've been living under a rock, you know what's happened to Ozil, and he's been excluded from the Premier League squad and pretty much every squad in general. Considering he's the highest paid uh, player, is probably not a good decision. Considering he's one of the best players, it's also probably not a good decision. So, guys, initial thoughts. Okay. Uh, so, um, I, I don't know, James. I don't know if he's the best anymore. I think over the last three seasons or so, when he did play, he regressed quite a bit. He didn't, you know, contribute that much to the defence like he used to earlier, cover as much ground or whatever. But aside from that, you are right. He is the highest paid and he still does have the ability of producing a good attacking return, which is something we're lacking right now. So it is a bit confusing to me. But with Arteta taking the, uh, you know, blame almost unto himself, saying that Ozil couldn't deliver to what his requirements were. And I, I mean, with him, we've seen other players change themselves to fit in. So I think it's a bit down to both Arsenal mismanaging it, but also Ozil's maybe lack of commitment on the pitch as well. Gaje, what about you? Yeah, so for me, James, uh, as I see it, so uh, so this has been happening a long time ago. This is not a problem which happened maybe two years ago, three years ago. So I think with the sanchez Ozil situation, we had to make a choice, Arsenal. And we made the choice, we kept Ozil, we sold Sanchez. So this was also to please the fans, also that's what I feel. But another thing here is now uh, he's not in the Europa League squad, he's not in the Premier League squad. So that part I don't understand because Premier League I understand because you need work rate right away from home. But Europa League with those teams which are pretty small and those away grounds and stuff like that, I think he can contribute more, especially in the Europa League. Because if you're paying him 350k, might as well just play him at least for the Europa League games, at least the initial stages. That's what I personally feel. So it's a bit of a bad situation we are currently in, but Arteta has taken a strong decision and I think we should back the manager here. That's what I feel. Okay. Uh, how much do you think this is down to his recent political comments over what is happening in China? Um, honestly, I, I don't think it's down to that. Uh, I think uh, this Tesla makes a very good point. Like, why is he not in the Europa League squad? I mean, it's a long season. Uh, they have barely had a break. We need rotation. So, from a footballing perspective, there are reasons as to why it doesn't make sense. But then again, on the other hand, um, we've known Arteta, even in the documentary, I think that City had, right? Uh, or was it a book? Wherever they revealed Sterling. Uh, like, so when Sterling went to uh, Pep and he, he was like, uh, what did Pep was like, what did you do wrong? He's like, I didn't do what Mikhail told me to do. So, there's always an acceptance that Arteta gives you a plan and he expects you to work to that plan. So, I think from a management point of view, if someone who's already the highest paid player is going to be unruly, then you want to, you know, shut that down very quickly so it doesn't become the culture. I think it might be that. What do you think? Yeah, so I agree with Darren there as well. I don't think it's a completely a political factor also. So, this has been coming and uh, you see, in a way, you should keep your to yourself also because there are two sides to this story, right? So this, so yeah. I mean, Nozil is uh, talking about the Chinese and those kind of issues also. But you need to, so not all footballers go and talk about which side they are on, which side they are not on, especially when they are not playing that well and they are out, out of the team. So uh, and with this Ganasaurus uh, matter as well, I think it's just drama because it's total drama to be honest. Because I think out of the fifty-five people who were uh, I think Arsenal laid off 55 workers, if I'm not mistaken. So, Ganosaurus was one of them. And they pulled this story at the last day of the transfer window. So this is completely what they want to do with this media run. They just, they just wanted to create a story. So, that's why they bought this at the end of the transfer window. But happily, we signed party, so it overshadowed that a bit. But uh, this Ganosaurus, and then he, had, he has posted comments after we played well. 
we won so he's like the admin of arsenal now he's just cheering everyone up you know so i mean uh, there are so many factors for his downfall but uh, to be honest i'd like to stick to the fact that at least in the cup games or the europa league games he should have been in the squad for me because we lack creativity i know arteta wants to focus on the defense a lot because that is our weakness but now there is no midfield that's what i can see attacking midfield we are severely lacking creativity on a question to the both of you do you think uh, either you think there is a more creative player in your squad forget about like defensively uh, disciplined i'm saying in pure terms of creativity do you think there is uh if if played in the right position i would argue, i think it's possible that saka and pepe can reach close to his level but in terms of pure talent and ability i don't think so no no the, the way to the pass the ability to see that pass and all i don't think we, we can same here so in terms of way to the pass creativity there is no uh, person like ozil but uh, even sebaz i think if he plays number 10 he can improve but uh, saka seems to be the most uh, influential player you know during the last few games so he is one for the future if we can play him at number 10 there's a possibility that we can develop him okay so just one more thing on the situation of brazil now by uh, the way i see it i don't it logically definitely doesn't make sense from a footballer and point like there is a reason yes he is not, for him to not be a starter there is a reason for him to maybe not be on the bench even you could argue but to be completely frozen out of team it doesn't make any sense especially the fact that he was there for 8 years okay at one point he was like your main man and even though even though his form has dropped uh, i feel if he if he the player with and the dressing room well, there is an issue in the dressing room he should be sold but if there is no issue in the dressing room and the player wants to stay and the player wants to play and the player seemingly has a good relationship with the manager as well i don't understand why he will be completely left out of the team for a reason as basically he didn't work hard enough yeah it's because we're talking about the same yeah it's definitely not clear enough james you're right you're very right but again i think it's just this sort of strict you know we play as a team and if, if it means to play as a team it means we all put effort in and that's our motto then i can understand him being left out i also think it could be down to the fact that he does try to make a lot of a lot of these things about himself and uh, i have a feeling that it it was also the club's intention to try and ensure that he was sold Uh, at least domestically or even somewhere else but i think that also they in in, in a ways they messed up and then there was talk about how ozil refused to go to another club which gave him equally good offer so uh, i do have a feeling that he has put a good spin on this and that his pr team has made it look nicer to him than it probably should have uh, i do think that a lot of people are thinking about the political angle and that he was silenced because of it i i don't think that's the case i think uh, if you look at it objectively he has he's done both positive and very badly negative things too by siding with erdogan for example uh, so it's a 50 50 there but it seems to be that arteta doesn't want anyone who thinks he's bigger than the club at this point to be part of the squad i that's the only justification i can give but it is super weird and the club really has messed up in the long run with it regardless of that i think uh, <laughs> it's his attention to trying to make himself like the star whatever bigger that for me it's it's not sat well with me over the last few months okay yeah. so well uh, obviously sorry guys you were going to say something yeah so the other thing here is james what i feel is that uh, this decision has come from the top from stand itself so i don't think arteta completely wanted to leave ozil out because he obviously knows there is a lack of creativity so he wanted someone to be there at least from the bench but i think this has come from our owners who have told just don't give him any games just pay the cash and another thing is i don't think any big clubs were really interested in in him also to be honest so no one offered him 350k and it's down to his last year of the contract also so why just leave you can just stay and you know earn the cash and leave for free 
so there are certain factors to really consider when you know looking at the situation i agree with you there guys i don't think it's purely arteta's decision i think if arteta was allowed to make the decision completely by himself i think if it was from a footballing perspective he would definitely be like yo you are not going to be even on the bench if you don't pull your weight and but you definitely going to be in the squad because uh there's no reason for him not to be i mean even if you go down to like the lowest the, the worst player at the, in that squad is definitely not going to offer more than ozil out of form you know? so then there's that as well so and it's not about growth it's the fact that you should still utilize the player that you have and at least monitor him through shirt sales or something but to completely free him out it's definitely come from above as well so i don't really know maybe it is political but maybe it's not i don't know enough on the matter to say plus i have not read up enough i just do know that it's not purely football it's there's other things tied into it for sure um moving on now there's definitely a problem ideally what would you do to fix it in january the transfer window is there you you tell him look rather than try your luck as a free agent why don't you go somewhere for a bit more money why don't you get out not playing for a year play do you think he won't play do you think he won't get emergency like sign back uh, call back to the squad when there's an injury what do you think is going to happen if there's an emergency injury i don't see ozil being part of the squad again because if he comes back then it's basically bad on arteta and the board as well so i don't think there's a chance of him coming back what's done is done and i don't see him leaving in jan also to be honest because he will just see out his contract and leave for free next summer uh, most probably he will go to uh, turkey or to the mls that's what i feel but uh, even if there's injury i don't see him coming back to the squad so yeah yeah i'd have to agree it's hard to see him back i i do think it's possible because apparently you can register them in january for the second half of the season so if it gets really bad and transfers aren't easy i i think there's a possibility you and he did start almost all of arteta's first 10 games um so to me ozil's fix the answer is you we got to get rid of him at this point in time it's just like it, it's generating bad publicity for this for the for the team and more than anything else it's the wages right it's just such a hit on our books so we can't afford to pay that to any other big players until we get rid of him um with the covid uh, losses and all so if it's not january hopefully it is january but we're just going to have to let him go eventually there's no other way as for the arsenal are the issues my god there's a lot to solve there from a creative point of view who would you if you could sell one player and buy one player in january who would it be for obviously i think both of us would say brazil so we will we will regard ozil as like untransferable in january and any other player you would sell why and who would you buy and why in january James, uh, we have around three to four. One of the first defenders ever, you know, Scott Van Mustafi, Socrates. Uh, there are some really, really bad players. Even Callum Chambers, I don't rate to be honest. If you're selling, it could be either one of those three. Most probably, maybe Socrates. Anyways, he wants to leave. He's also so not who, in the squad. Who would you sell if you could make the call? If you could make the call, who would you sell? It could be because you think they'll bring the most money. or because you just hate them the most or because they just don't fit at all which is- i would go with mustafi uh, james because even during the leicester game i mean he didn't track wardy's run right so he was the reason that they scored so i know he has been out of the game for some time but still it's a school boy error i mean he's a world cup winner right at the end of the day this guy won the world cup and you can't defend like that so it's cordon mustafi in terms of getting a player in uh, see, to be honest i actually like ross barkley from uh, chelsea so i know aston villa got him but he is a kind of player we actually might need because he is a runner of the ball so he's like a downgrade of grealish to be honest same physique but he just runs with the ball and a creative midfielder so there's a player i really like because i don't think we'll have the cash to spend 
So if it's going to be, it's going to be a loan move or something like that. I know we can't get Ross Barkley now, but I would like to have any creative player to be honest, any midfielder, even Gilfie Sigurdsson, if he's not playing for Everton. That's an interesting thing. I did not expect that. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you, sir, on the on the fact that we need a guy who can run with the ball, but I don't think it's Barty or Sigurdsson. Um, the it, it has to be a Jota like type, right? So someone who can run at the defense and spot a good pass. Uh, so you know you know how Tom- Thomas Isiski used to play. Yeah, so the pre assists and the, the 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 nonstop energy in the game. I think someone like that. Uh, it's hard to think of anyone who's free for transfer, though. I mean. Gosh, same you see. I don't think we can afford anyone. <laughs> I don't think we can afford our still, and yeah, it's really hard to identify. But uh, someone in that mold for sure. Maybe, maybe uh, give yourselves like forget about the financial aspect. Just the player who you think will fit in. Logically, yeah, I think Uzema is a good player. Okay. Uh, it's interesting that you all didn't choose a defender, but in terms of defense games, I think uh, I think Premier League this season. You know, we are only into six games, but we we are the second best defense in the league. I think to be honest, after Aston Villa. So I think defense is a bit. So I won't say it's hundred percent sorted, but it's sort of okay now because with Gabriel and Kieran Tierney and Burnley, you know, coming back to form. Only the, the weakness I see is David Luiz and Hector Bellerin on that side. On the right side, but on the left side and the goalkeeper, I think we are sort of okay to be honest. And even if Saliba comes back and plays well, plays well, so I think uh, it should be okay. Defense. Yeah, no, uh, makes sense. And more more than the individual players, James, I think as a squad we defend way better. Um, so that that you'll see less mistakes on guys like uh, Zaka who are put, are put under too much pressure because of the fact that now they always have a second pass. And uh, people like Partey and even I'm going to say it, Mo El Neni seem to be very good at relieving the pressure and creating space. So I think in that way, defensively we are sorted. It's just that the the style we've taken to make sure we're defensively sorted means we are not so fluent in attack. That's the that transition is the pain. Yeah, it's a compromise actually. Yeah, it's bad. You need a guy. You need a guy who can who can add a little more than just being playing a role. You need a guy who. Go further than you know, just being able to switch positions, but also do things on his own. That's the kind of guy you need. A guy who can, who, who tracks back, but at the same time he can run at players and make things happen. Basically, honestly, can we get Pulisic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too late for that. He has a wrong London club. I think we'll have a decent chance of winning the Europa League. So you think you will finish fifth and win the Europa League? Is that yeah. what you're saying? That's the most realistic one. My heart still wants to say fourth, but now nah, got sentimental value for that placement, don't you? <laughs> uh, don't make fun of that, bro. <laughs> gotcha, uh, what place? Uh, so I think uh, this season it's open. I still think we might sneak into fourth. To be honest, there is a chance because I don't think uh, United, Chelsea aren't playing that well. I still think we have a chance with our improvement in the defense. So I think we'll finish fourth. Europa League. I mean, we are bad in Europe to be honest. So I don't think we'll win that. But uh, we might actually win the League Cup. I have a sneaky feeling. I don't think we'll win the FA Cup. We already done that. But uh, I think League Cup is a real possibility and a fourth place. Okay. The thing is, if we had missed, if we hadn't missed three obvious chances, we would have been on thirteen points right now. But the three obvious chances that really should have been scored that we missed have meant that we lost two games. So yeah, that's ah. actually true. Yeah, because yeah. I think this like Kazet's chance against Liverpool, and then Aubameyang's chance City? versus City, exactly. Yeah. And then uh, the disallowed goal versus Leicester. Disallowed goal. I exactly. think if he so had scored it's... first, I don't think Leicester would have scored. To be honest, James, I gotta say, man, game. like since since Arteta joined, we've had the shittest luck, bro, out of all teams. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on that one uh, but um, so my last question is something that I found out a few weeks ago I was actually surprised by it uh, Torreira moved to Atletico Madrid 
Are you guys happy with that? Do you think it's a bad idea? Do you think you should stay? Or is there just no place for me in this system or midfield? I admit I was also a bit, a bit surprised when I heard about it, but I did read up, I think, on a few articles and he wasn't very happy with England, for one. And two, he was struggling to fit the team dynamic. So, uh, I still think he's a very good player. And I still think he brought in some really good value in his first season. But you could see from his performances, James, that he started dropping off. He started being a little late on the tackle. Uh, he didn't have... He had this really good ability to be the third man into the box when he started. And he does that for Uruguay as well. But he kind of became very hesitant to make those runs as well. So, might have been good. But we'll have to wait and see, honestly. It's a little too early to say I was a bit disappointed though. Does it? Yeah, to be honest, James, uh, there was this one match, I think, uh, during the World Cup, Uruguay versus Portugal. So, this Torreira guy was man-marking uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, blocking it away. He was awesome. And then we signed him. I was like, he's the next Patrick Vieira. I mean, not in terms of size, but in terms of what he does. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, I'm really sad to see him, you know, leave to Atletico, but it's a loan. So, there's always a chance of getting him back. But we signed a like-to-like -like replacement doors in Part A. And even El Nene is putting in the performances. So, I don't see a real void being uh, left there. So I suppose next, okay. se next season, you'll know whether there's a place for him or not. Because uh, Atletico Madrid, it would be like... He would be the type of player to go to Atletico Madrid. Like, he's aggressive, the tackles, the work rate, everything is there. So, I'm a, I feel like he will only do well there unless you know there's a thumb or something but I hope it's all the best because I actually like him and I think he has a good future at Arsenal if if he can modify it a little bit to fit it so anyways guys okay. thanks for the podcast again uh, it's been nice thank you for coming for the first time Darren we'll call you back soon like and subscribe or follow if you're on Instagram peace